Hi friends, welcome to another first look. Uh, you know, the 10 millimeter is just such a peculiar cartridge because when it was first introduced, uh, what, 25 years ago or so, 30 years ago, everyone kind of went, well, you know, we don't really know what this is for and, you know, we're not really sure what to do with it. And, you know, and I've got this 44 Magnum and so on. Thanks, but no thanks. Except as the years went by and manufacturers actually started to produce guns and ammunition for it, well, then suddenly people got an uh, inkling of what the capability of this really versatile round is. And of course, today we have an explosion in guns, an explosion in ammunition choices, and a rapidly growing, pretty rabid uh, fan following, and, and that includes me. Uh, today what I want to show you is one of the latest offerings. Now this is from Smith & Wesson. Uh, this is their, I'd call it a full-size holster pistol, the uh, m and 2 This is an optics ready gun and it's got a 4.6 inch barrel. And so let's talk about it just a little bit. You know, I remember when Smith & Wesson introduced the M&P, oh gosh, I don't know, 20 years ago maybe? Uh, I think it, at first we collectively went, yeah, okay, right, we got it, we know what you're chasing here, but boy, Smith & Wesson really stuck to their guns over the years and expanded the line, offering just almost an unlimited number of, of uh, features and benefits and sizes and models. And, you know, I, I've just really been impressed by what they've done with it over the years. And of course, with performance center modifications, for instance, a lot of those things got translated into production guns. Now, this is a production gun. And uh, with an MSRP of $665, it gives you, you know, like I said, it's a full-size holster gun, which means that it's easy to shoot, it's easy to manipulate, it's very controllable. And in 9mm 40, 10mm or 45, it gives you a lot of options. Now our test gun is in 10mm. Well, let's talk about this one just a little bit before we do any shooting. It's actually really loaded with features. I like the external thumb safety on mine. It's an ambi. Uh, it's got an optics ready slide. Uh, length is 7.9 inches, so it's a big burly gun, uh, but I think it helps to control things. It's heavy enough to kind of sit in your hand, but it's also light enough that you could actually carry this gun every day. I know guys bigger than me who carry full-size guns every day in inside the waistband holsters. And uh, a full-size gun in 10 millimeter talks a lot when you pull it out of the holster. Now, the front and rear sights are both optic heights, and uh, that means they'll co-index on a red dock. This is a 15 plus one in the magazine, your kind of classic double stack magazine. And uh, this will also shoot with the magazine out, which I think is just fine. I mean, you, know, you never know when you might be in that situation. Okay, we're set up at about, I think I'm nine yards away, give or take a little bit. And uh, I've got a 180 here that's, uh, the chronographs out about 1150 so it's you know it's kind of an upper mid-range load for a 10 millimeter uh, I just kind of want to want you to see the gun recoil and and uh, how it handles so let's just shoot it and see what happens here so Okay, so other than losing my mind on that one shot, uh, you can see it's actually really controllable. In this gun, uh, this platform, I feel very much like I'm shooting an all steel 1911 in 45 ACP. Okay, we're set up here, I'm at 25 yards and uh, I've got five shots in the gun and let's do some sort of careful targeting to see what I can get out of it. My experience has been with M&Ps is that some of them can shoot really, really, really good. And so let's find out together because I have not targeted it like this before. So, and uh, I'm gonna cheat and make sure I have my iPal peep sight on. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens.
Well, I have no idea because I can't actually see the target. <laughs> Let's go look. Okay, well, I, you know, I would attribute this to me and not the gun. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I like to historically take the two worst shots out because that gives you the results that you would get from a ransom rest. Uh, we've really tested that a lot over the years. And so I guess here we can decide if I wanted to take these two shots off. I mean, you've got definitely a one inch group here. I mean, if you took these two shots off, you still kind of have a one inch group. And I think even this group here is only about an inch and a quarter, you know, maybe a little bit more than an inch and a quarter. So I'll tell you what, I don't think that you can argue with that from what's essentially a, a full size holster fighting pistol. And uh, I suspect if I took my time and maybe let the trigger break in a little bit more that we could keep that really consistent. So uh, that was really interesting. Okay, I figured since we were here and, and getting the gun dirty, we might as well chronograph a few. Uh, we're gonna shoot them in this order. So Federal 10 millimeter, 180. Uh, Buffalo Bore Heavy 10 millimeter, which is a 180. Uh, they say 1350. Uh, let's see, 10 millimeter, 180 grain, six hour V crown. They call that 1250 feet per second. And a 10 millimeter double tap, which is a 125 grain Barnes at 1600 feet per second out of a 4.6 inch barrel, which is what this gun is. So uh, keep those in mind and we'll see how it goes. I'll just shoot one after another uh, and we'll verify in between shots. Okay, first shot's gonna be the Federal Load. Looks like 1221. Uh, next shot is the Buffalo Boar. Thirteen thirty three. That's pretty close. I think they said thirteen fifty. Uh, next is the Sig ammunition. Eleven seventy one. That was pretty close. I think they were advertising twelve fifty. That's pretty close though. And the last is that uh, double tap load, that real lightweight bullet. So let's see. Well, 1455, you know, they said 1600. And I mean, that's not unusual to be that far off on a chronograph out of a real gun. So um, I think that was all pretty interesting. Okay, you know, just for fun, let's shoot 50. We're at 54 or 55 yards, give or take a little bit. So uh, let's see if I can hit the target. <laughs> no guarantees. I've never zeroed the gun, but I have a feeling it was a little bit of a challenge because it might be shooting low right. I'm not sure. So let's go see what happened. Yeah, that's that's what was going on here. It, I thought I saw him hit over here and then I compensate a little bit and then it looks like we got three hits, which I'm not real proud of, but it's better than a punch in the eye. You know, one more thing I wanted to point out uh, before we say goodbye is this has what is essentially almost a flat trigger. It's got the little flipper thing, uh, but it's almost a flat trigger. And I'm really a convert of the flat triggers. And if you haven't tried one, you really need to go to your gun store and, and try a couple sample guns if they have them. Uh, several aftermarket companies like Apex and people like that will sell trigger kits to, uh, to replace them. And you can upgrade, usually makes the action a little crisper, a little snappier, and you can get that flat face trigger, which I think adds a little bit to controllability and feel. And if you have short fingers, it also puts the trigger just a little closer to your hand, it seems. <laughs> that might be subjective. I don't know. Uh, but as you can see, this gun is accurate, controllable, and uh, I think it's a real value for the MSRP. And so if you're looking for a kind of a do-all, you know, 10 millimeter, 45, 9mm, 40, it's hard to beat this platform. It's uh, well vetted. It's proven itself over the decades, and I think it's here to stay. Hey, thanks for tuning in and uh, take a new shooter shooting, would you? All right, see you later.